It's very exciting. Makes me go weak at the knees. Uh, the Jurassic Park theme, amazing John Williams. You know, actually, I've been slightly surprised by the uh, the responses to the dinosaur song. Please do keep them coming. The best one or two will be popped into the running order. Uh, 01603617321 to phone, or you can text 81333 as Neville from Norwich has just popped Norfolk at the start of your message. Uh, now, for those of you who love Jurassic Park and who felt all unnecessary at that bit of John Williams, you've probably been there watching watching this and listening to this with a certain amount of excitement. We have learned more in the past decade from genetics than a century of digging up bones. A whole new frontier has opened up. We have our first genetically modified hybrid. We just went and made a new dinosaur? Probably not a good idea. Probably not, uh, but those of us who love Jurassic Park are very excited about it. And for some people who've probably been fans of the film since Jurassic Park and Lost World, and we can probably forget the third one that no one really watched, uh, but those films, a common fantasy that you could be somehow involved with the movie franchise, and it's gone and happened for Jack Ewins. Hello, Jack. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, but probably not quite as well as you. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> It's very strange at the moment. Um, even though it's all now coming to an end, it's uh, been a very strange year. <laughs> so, f first of all, I think you were on the line for just a bit of the Jurassic Park music. Does that awaken certain feelings for you? Oh, it does. It, it does uh, get you all emotional. I don't know anyone out there who doesn't listen to that theme tune and, and not love it. Um, yeah, it's just a classic theme tune and John Williams nailed it. And I don't know how old you are, but were those films a big part of your life when you were young? <laughs> Well, uh, my mum actually took me to see the first film when I was four years old uh, the, at the Hollywood cinema at Lowestoft on the seafront. And uh, I remember seeing the scene where the T-Rex was chasing the Jeep and it just blew my mind. That's the only thing I can actually remember because I was so young. Um, and ever since then, I've just been a huge fan of the franchise. I think for most four-year-olds, it would do more than blow your mind. I think it would probably give you nightmares for several weeks. In fact, I was older than that, and I wasn't allowed to see Jurassic Park in case it frightened me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> I don't want to speak ill of my mum here, but she let me watch things like Alien and all that sort of stuff when I was really little. Go and it, mum! I was, I was more inspired uh, by what I was watching than scared. For some reason, it never really bothered me. I was more scared by Who Framed Roger Rabbit uh, when I was younger, <laughs> uh, the cartoons. But the, the realistic-looking things never really frightened me. But, um, yeah, it definitely uh, inspired me to become a storyteller, and that's something I'm gunning frantically towards right now. So what exactly happened in relation to the latest film, the Jurassic World release, which is now worryingly 20 years on from that original film? <laughs> uh, what, do you mean how did it all begin? Well, for you. Yeah, um, well, for me, I watched the films and I was inspired by those and uh, been a huge... Because they were like my Star Wars, essentially. It was a big event movie and I've uh, been loyal to it ever since I was little. And uh, since the advent of social media... On the internet, I was getting to know other fans, and uh, a gentleman called Timothy Glover, who lives in Australia, approached me last, uh, no, December 2013, I think, to make a website uh, based off a leaked character's name from the film, the new one. And we built this website that was sort of emulating the fictional company. Uh, at the time, it was known as Patel Corporation. Uh, later, we find out it's the Masrani Global Corporation. But at the time, yeah, it was Patel. Jurassic Park 4 was coming out, and we made this website just for a bit of fun, and it gathered so much attention uh, that Universal uh, caught wind of it and then contacted us on eight, in April of 2014 and wanted to bring us on board to help with the marketing of the new movie. Now, first of all, building a website is, as many people know, not that easy. That's why we often get other people to build and look after our websites. Did you have a lot of experience in that field? Well, actually, uh, I... Uh, design the look of it along with Tim. Uh, Tim's the actual guy who builds it. I have no idea about coding <laughs> websites. I'm the guy who will say, Tim, can we do this? Can we have it this way? And he's like, well, maybe. I don't know. That's a challenge or just an outright, no, that's impossible. <laughs> um, and then we both collectively write the content for the, or co write the content for the web website. And uh, any photoshopping that needs doing, like the Masrani company logo, if that needs to go on a satellite or if I need to paint a concept piece of like a dinosaur or something like that, um, that's all me. I do the uh, sort of artist, artistic side of it. Um, 
in that respect. But Tim is an artist in his own right. He builds it through the magic of coding and things that uh, make no sense to myself at this time. <laughs> I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. I mean, knowing how to use Photoshop, knowing and having the artistic ability to, to create dinosaurs, to create a, a convincing logo, because the whole point of this fan site is it was so convincing that lots of people didn't know that Universal wasn't behind it. And, you know, Universal saw it and thought these are the guys to, to bring the idea of a fan site that they wanted anyway to fruition. Yeah, they, they did mention to us when we were... Because they flew us over to L.A. last September to meet with the director, uh, Colin Trevorrow, and the producer, Frank Marshall, um, and some of the other people at Universal, uh, where we pitched what we were going to be doing. And um, and they said that they were going to be doing this kind of website anyway. And we actually, you know, pipped them to the post. And they were like, well, we could either hire you or tell you to take it down. And they decided to do, um, you know, in my opinion, the right move. Would bring the uh, bring the diehard fans in uh, to the actual loop. Um, it wasn't just us, actually. There's a, a guy called Manuel who lives in Spain who made a video for our website, and uh, Mark Engler who designed a poster was another fan. Uh, they brought on board to do some things for the movie, and that's something that big studios don't tend to do too often. So it's uh, sort of grab the opportunity while you can. The sentence we were flown out to LA is I think a sentence a lot of people would like to be able to say. The moment when it became clear to you that you were going to be flown out to LA, what was that like? Um, <laughs> it was one of those things where well, it's like a dream come true, really. I can, I'm still trying to uh, believe it myself because I was just in LA the other week for the premiere. So <laughs> You got I'm to go to the premiere? i come down from it at the moment. <laughs> what on earth was it like going to a proper Hollywood movie premiere? And what did you wear? It was it was a crazy event. Um, I know they weren't showing it on one screen. There was like several of them. And it was a huge event, and there were so many people there that uh, we got sort of swept away of it all. And the, uh, the main thing was we were there to see the movie. So as fans, we were like, right, now let's get down to the nitty-gritty stuff and watch this film. And we saw it, and it blew us away. And then, you know, we had the after party we went to, and we saw Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard and... Uh, uh, met Colin, the director, again, and he was eager to hear our thoughts on the movie and uh, spoke to the writer, Derek Connolly, and congratulated everyone. And at the moment, uh, the Jurassic Park, uh, the team, the dedicated uh, team behind this new movie, uh, well, they're all celebrating at the moment because this, uh, the last Jurassic Park film came out in 2001. We haven't had a film for 14 years. And in that time, uh, the Jurassic Park fan base has been sort of the, the quiet fan base everyone knows about star wars fans and lord of the rings fans and doctor who fans and all that lot but the uh, jurassic park fan base uh, was quite quiet and now i think it's nice that our voices are finally being heard and you know from the technology perspective from the filmmaking side of it technology just advances at such a pace that creating realistic dinosaurs nowadays has got to be easier and the end product so much more fulfilling for the the people behind it yeah, it's also, I think, a lot of people tend to forget that with this new film, it's not just the dinosaurs they're bringing. They're actually, the park, as the tagline of the movie says, the park is open. So they don't just have to say the dinosaurs being living, breathing things in this movie. They have to say the idea of this entire park being open for 10 years. And, the, you know, it's just a normal everyday occurrence now for people to go fly out and see a T-Rex or a Stegosaurus or whatever dinosaur it is. And that's what, you know, the plot point is behind the movie. And the the fact that in the new movie, I'm blown away by how realistic the park is itself, more so than the dinosaurs, because it really makes you want to go there. And I feel like that's what the Maserani Global website and the Universal's uh, other website, the sister website to our one, uh, JurassicWorld.com, which is like a working online brochure for the park, uh, emulates it. It really makes people want to go and actually, uh, you know, visit, uh, uh, you know, Jurassic World. Well, apart from the danger of death, I'd really love to go. Um, <laughs> and certainly from after the Jurassic Park movie, I was determined that, that me and Reeve, who was in my class, were going to go and be paleontologists when we were older. It didn't quite come to fruition. I'm working in radio. Um, but um, but I, I thoroughly appreciate the, the joy behind it. You've had to keep this secret. And I know that um, your, your dad, Tosh Ewins, people will have heard him uh, playing on the afternoon show, uh, finally revealed this, I think, at the weekend. So now you can tell people about it, which is wonderful in its in its its own right but where do you see this going next because it's a huge thing to have on your cv 
Yeah, um, it's one of those things that um, we've got some things in the pipeline that we obviously can't reveal at this time. Um, we we definitely this is a great springboard off for us creative uh, in the creative aspect, um, and obviously uh, some people want to know what else we could be doing. But all I can say at this time is we definitely have some uh, ideas, and we have a few ideas that are you know becoming more and more real as time goes on that we're. Uh, pushing forward and the everything universal has done and colin and frank marshall and uh, derek Conley, everyone has helped us get to this point so you know i want to say thank you to those guys uh, for getting us here and yeah and if the sequel is greenlit i know uh, the masrani website well let's just say it's an ongoing updating website so that's that's my tease. That's your tease. <laughs> Watch this space. Uh, Jack yeah. Ewans, will you please come back and tell us how things are going as uh, your burgeoning career progresses? Yes, I will do. I mean, I'll be around Norwich a lot more, so I'll be up that way a lot more towards the end of the year. Well, we look forward to seeing you. Congratulations on a huge success. And if people want to go and check out the website, what uh, what is it again? It's masraniglobal.com. And or you can go to JurassicWorld.com and you can actually find uh, the Maserani website in uh, through a link, uh, either the bo- right bottom of the page or just underneath Park Cams, I do believe. I think there'll be a little spike of people from Radio Norfolk heading there now. And uh, Kev, incidentally, just texted in to say, Hello, Thunder, I went to the cinema Saturday night and saw Jurassic. It was brilliant. I can't wait for, uh, for my chance to see it. Thank you very much, Jack. We'll see you uh, soon, hopefully, in the studio. And our first dinosaur-themed song is Walk the Dinosaur from 1987.